Over the past year, a group of scientists have been working quietly behind the scenes, trying to figure out exactly what has been happening with Embalmer's clots. They've been doing this work quietly and consistently because they are so anxious about what it could mean for themselves personally and in their professional work. But what it means is that they've finally come up with a document that will absolutely blow your mind. Now, listen very carefully. They have to remain anonymous. And that's going to be one of the challenges that we face is that people are going to say, you need to show who you are. But what they have done is they have put together a document which they have now shared publicly, which they believe is absolutely critical for further investigations to be done. You have to remember that there is an unusual pattern here. And the unusual pattern is that nobody seems to be interested in what the embalmers are observing. Now, some people may say, well, the embalmers are not doctors and they are not scientists. Why are they talking about it? The reality is that they have observed something that was unusual a transition that primarily occurred in 2021, and they don't have an explanation for it. My view is that if they hadn't raised awareness for it, that would be negligent. They had the responsibility to do that, but not everyone is interested in looking at these outcomes. And so it raises very, very serious questions. Now I keep on talking about it and you may wonder, why do I keep on raising this issue about embalmer's clots? What really is in it? What am I focused on? Why do I keep on doing it? Well, a few months ago, after I had done the original interview with regards to embalmer's clots, where I had done with Tom Haviland and his survey um, outcomes, um, a few months later, I was contacted by somebody who worked in a cath lab in the US. And this individual confirmed that not only were these clots occurring with the embalmers, but they were occurring with the living. Now, this was a whistleblower message, meaning that he didn't give his identity away. And therefore, what that means is that he put his job at risk. I feel a tremendous sense of responsibility with that. And that's part of the reason why I keep talking about it. I feel as though I've been given that responsibility to raise awareness about this. This is really the substack. The link is in the description. This is where we had the interview with the whistleblower, myself and Dr. Shetty. And he shared with us a number of images that were quite stunning. Um, for everyone to see. So if you want to see the full video, you need to go at the description. I'll not show you any more simply because some people are squeamish and they don't necessarily want to see the clots. But it was a very, very important interview because it highlighted that this was occurring in the living. Now, when I saw that, that changed my perspective completely because I realized that we have to therefore understand the mechanisms, the pathophysiology, in order to try and see if we can mitigate what could be quite significant occurrences. Now, when they looked at the analysis, they took into consideration that it had been done as well previously. So there was a Mike Adams who did some work early on, and this was after the died suddenly presentation, and he was looking at the clot analysis at that time. And it shows you the details of the things that he had seen in the blood. And he had compared it with regards to baseline, his own blood, his own blood clot, to see what was the difference between them. And so this analysis had been done early in 2021. But since then, nothing else had been done. So these scientists went, got more embalmer's clots, and they then did further, more detailed analysis to try and figure out what in the world was going on. I'm not doing the analysis here now because that will take some real 
in-depth discussion and talk. And my hope is to try and get a number of scientists who are expert in the field of clotting for them to go through the analysis and try and see if they can make sense of what it is that they are finding. The important thing to note is that they have observed that the characteristics of these Ambalmas clots are very different from normal standard clots. And here is some of the, just to give you a little bit of a, a taste of what is in this document here, they were looking at four embalmers clots and they were showing some of the characteristic abnormalities or the proteins that were involved in them, fibrinogen, beta, gamma, alpha, and the ratios. This was very important and helped them to formulate a theory as to what they thought was going on. And they showed a breakdown of the main constituents for each of the four samples. This one here was a young teenage female, this one here was a 25-year-old male. This one here was a 40-year-old. They don't know the gender. And this one here was a 70-year-old male. What I've realized is that there does seem to be some difference in the constituents, the main constituents. So it suggests that the mechanism that is associated with these clots is partially about the main constituents, but they're going to be minor constituents, um, constituents in the clot that give it that characteristic, very fibrous, elastic feel that is very unusual. And I'll, as I said, I'm not going to give you the main breakdown at the moment, but one of the things that they had noted is that one of the important clotting proteins as a whole gets incorporated into these clots. It's not just in the pieces as would normally happen in a normal clot. There is something very unusual about them. That's the reality. And to ignore the fact that they are occurring is extremely unscientific. I genuinely can't understand anyone who is not curious about what could be the cause. It's one thing to say that you don't believe that the embalmers are seeing it. And some people genuinely think that. They think they've just made it up and maybe they've got some putty or something and they've put these clots just to get attention, that could be one small possibility. But this is not a one-off, and they've collected hundreds of samples from across the world. There is something very strange happening, and it needs to be delineated. Even more worryingly, this pattern seems to be also occurring in people. We therefore really have to understand why is it happening. The outcomes of not doing that are going to be that we're going to see a transition in the type of presentation that we would normally see. People always get clots with a pulmonary embolus or even a stroke um, or an embolic phenomenon blocking an artery to a leg. If this is continuing to occur in the living, what you will then see is that your standard methods of treatment are no longer as effective. You will find that thrombolysis will not work effectively. You will find that when they try to break up these clots by you know, using local measures, it still doesn't work. Additionally, if this information is correct, it will indicate that quite likely, even the blood thinners that people are on will not be as effective. So, if you are noticing patterns that say, for instance, people who are on blood thinners for clotting problems and they are still clotting on a regular basis, that's a red flag. That indicates that something has changed in the human physiology that is not as easy to address, even with medication. So the implications of not looking at this are very serious. It will mean that people have higher risk events in the near future if they are not already happening. And so there is a responsibility on the medical community, if they hear about this, to first check and see whether or not there has been a transition in the way that disease is pre presenting. That's the responsibility clinically. And doctors should know this. Nurses will probably know this as well. Are they seeing the same type of disease? Is it the same way? Is there a concern with the way how patients are presenting?
These are the kinds of questions that need to be answered quite urgently. And without those answers, we are putting everyone at risk. Fundamentally, I think that what is happening is that there is a general anxiety about dealing with what we call the elephant in the room. Now, without actually reflecting carefully, it is concerning, and I can understand that, but there is an elephant that is sitting around, and that elephant is not being acknowledged. And without acknowledgement of the elephant, there is no chance to mitigate against the impact it has on the couch or the room. That's the situation that we have today. What is happening is that people are afraid to ask the questions because of the implications if the answers are correct. I understand that. But at the end of the day, the people who should be most concerned are not clinicians because they have just followed the rules and the system. They have a responsibility now to make sure that if there is an elephant, it is observed, acknowledged, and addressed. We're going to start and continue this process of asking these hard questions. Remember, as I said, this is no longer just a theory. We have now got clear evidence that something is abnormal with regards to these clots. This is quite a comprehensive view of what they have done. And they have looked in a lot of detail as to the potential mechanism. This is a picture of one of the clots that they had. It was 19 inches long. This is definitely not a normal pattern. And what they have done in this document is that they have broken down the science as to what they think could be happening. As I said, that's a conversation for another period of time and certainly something that we have to check with regards to scientific experts as to their own thoughts on it. But the point is this. Don't let anyone tell you that this is a conspiracy theory. This is real. This is having an impact. And we need to understand as quickly as we can how this can be mitigated. So there is still a lot of work ahead of us, but we appreciate your support. And as usual, remember to subscribe, look in the description. We are coming towards the final stages of our Kickstarter program about Disease X. We are about halfway there in terms of our funding targets. And please join us in this process as to getting this out there. All of this is relevant to what is happening at the moment. If we understand the science and prepare for the science and try and mitigate it with everything that we have around us, we have the best chance of making a difference for ourselves and our loved ones. So thank you again and look out for more information about these embalmer's clots. And I tell you, if you haven't seen the whistleblower video, you must click on the description and see exactly what he said about what was going on. Have a great evening.